I am not on. There we go. Good morning. Well, welcome here this morning. Um, it's good to see everybody is he, who's here. We are in the midst of those Sundays after Easter, so we got people on vacations and graduate proms and all the stuff that's going on, so we remember all those folks. Um, for those of you who... Um, Looking around, I think we all know the drill, but I'll remind, we don't think of ourselves as members or visitors, just who the Holy Spirit is called to this moment. Everything you need for worship is printed in front of you. Welcome to all the Facebook folks. Um, with that said, I'm going to go right to joys and concerns. Um, I've spoken to Beth this morning, and she gave me an update about Dan. Dan is going to probably be moved sometime soon to a, um, a long-term care. So he's kind of in a rehab situation, but he's going to be moved. We don't know where that is because he still has the trach. So with the trach, he has to, you have to have a kind of a specialty sort of place for that. So, but that, that move will probably happen in a matter of days. So please keep Beth in your prayers. Uh, Kevin, um, Kevin is, so... Kevin has viral meningitis. It's caused pneumonia. He also suffers from a condition called Wagner's disease. It's an autoimmune disease. Uh, it's like if you have Crohn's or colitis or arthritis, it's in that. So he's on, he's on immune suppressants. So that makes getting meningitis very tricky. Um, it's also a virus, and viruses are things that you just have to get through. So, that's the bad news. The good news is his breathing is stable, his temperature is stable. They were going up and down and seizures and all, all that has kind of stopped. They don't, they're not saying he's turned the corner, but they're saying that he is critical but stable. The, they're still thinking about moving him to UNC because that's where his Wegner's doctor was. And it's also, they have an intensive care for because of meningitis, it's a, it's a, a neuro, neurological virus. So the, the, the hope is, is that he'll end up there. The good news is things were getting just slowly, slowly worse. Things have stopped. And according to Beth, his lungs have, have shown signs of improvement. So we're cautiously, cautiously optimistic. So please continue to keep all of them in your prayers during all of this. Um, talk to Melanie. Melanie had two stints put in. Um, spent the night in the hospital, and when she called me when she was leaving, she was at Panera Bread. So she's like, I'm, I might not be at church Sunday, <laughs> but she's doing better. So, so, good, so that's all good news. So um, she's doing well, and she was with her her friend who, who, um, so that, that's, so she's okay. We have all sorts of folks, Ralph and Luetta and Roy and Gracie and all of those kind of shut-in folks that we keep in our prayers as they continue to struggle with aging, so please keep all those. Um, I was, I was told that the agape circle needs to meet in the nursery after worship. I don't know what that means, <laughs> but please, if you could meet there, and I, I think Sabrina has some things for you, so she'll meet you there. Um, this is a pretty, as far as things going on this week, oh yes, um, Pastor Angie uh, Powell, Angie Powell is the new pastor at St. Luke's in Tyro. She's going to be installed today at 2 and anybody's invited. Um, it's kind of a fun time to celebrate the installation of a, of, a, of, a new, of a new pastor in our area. So we give thanks for her presence. Anything else? Anything that needs to be addressed? Um, regular events this week. So we have um, our regular Bible study, our Pericope study on Tuesday. And then all the Facebook stuff <laughs> during the week. Anything else? New Supper Club sign up on the bulletin board, so please sign up for that. So with that said, let's take this moment with our prelude as we um, pray.
prepare to come into our Lord's presence. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Help save and defend us, O oh God. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Ken, if, do any of the younger people want to come up at this time? No, no? That's fine. Okay. We'll continue with our readings. I've got a lot of no's. The first reading is from Acts 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord 
our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. The psalm will be read responsively. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. O Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. The second reading comes from 1 Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the feudal ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, Love one, one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God. The word of the Lord. Now on that same day, when Jesus had appeared to Mary Magdalene, two disciples were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other? while you walk alone. alone. They stood still and looked sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place here in these these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we, have, we had hope that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astonished us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there... They came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. 
but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. As they went near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him, strongly saying, stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while, we were talking, while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of bread. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Um, it's been a long couple weeks for me, um, and I'll just tell you, I stand before you kind of tired. Um, and maybe that's a good place to be to preach this text, um, because we have this story, and in this story we have these, these disciples, but they're not the eleven. It, it, it kind of gives you an insight into the gospel of Luke that a disciple doesn't mean you just have to be part of the twelve, that, um, that maybe just the followers of Jesus are the disciples, and Cleopas and this other guy are walking alone. And, and of course, everybody knows they're supposed to go to Galilee, but the, in the midst of their heartbreak, in the midst of their fear in the midst of their sadness, in the midst of just their exhaustion, they go in the complete opposite direction to Emmaus. And as they're walking, they're not only dealing with all of these swirling uh, emotions of sadness and heartbreak, but all of these crazy rumors. I think we don't ever think about the the, the resurrection, we think like the whole world just shook and stood still as Jesus rose. But that's not what happened at all. The, 12, the, the disciples don't see it at all in the Gospel of Luke. It's, it's Mary Magdalene, right? She's the one who actually sees, and she's telling the guys to go to Jerusalem. And they aren't very kind to her. They treat her like, oh, silly woman. Right? So they're dealing with all of these things. And this is the context in which Jesus meets them. And it's interesting, it does not say that Jesus wore a disguise. It was something was preventing them from seeing him. You saw that in the text, right? Jesus was Jesus. Jesus was Jesus. As a matter of fact, Jesus does all the things Jesus can do. He can interpret to them the scripture. He's speaking with them. He's teaching them. He's doing all the Jesus stuff. But there's just something that's keeping them from getting it and from seeing it. Right? It's, it's just they don't, they walk this whole, they even urge him to just stay with us. He's like, I got to go, got more of this to do. No, stay with us. And so they do something that you just do with the stranger. You make a meal and you eat together. It's just it's, it's what good Jewish hospitality looks like. And it's in that common moment where he literally breaks the dinner roll in two, or whatever the bread was. It's when he breaks it in two to share it that he appears. It's almost like, boom. And then he vanishes. 
And so it really begs the question, is this Jesus, this magic Jesus that appears and disappears and appears and disappears, is that really what's going on in this text? Or is it disciples who see and then don't see and then see and then don't see? Um, I, I have to preach these every year. It's always Thomas. It's always the Emmaus story. And, and I love the Emmaus story because it speaks to my spirituality. And I've said this last year. I'll say it again. My spirituality is what I call a retrospective spirituality. Sometimes I wish I could be a, a, like a Pentecostal. Sometimes I wish I could just feel the spirit, right? And throw my hands in the air and just, I don't know, do something like speak in tongues or something. I wish I had that where I could just know. I can just feel it. It's here. I feel that is, that is not how it works for me. It just doesn't work that way for me. I, do, I, I, I am I'm not that guy. I don't have that gift. I, I'm the, did not my heart burn with it, but heart burn, <laughs> did not our hearts burn within us as he opened to us the scriptures. I'm the, rec, I'm like, oh, that's where you are, or that's where you were. And you know why I've learned that about myself? Because I have this thing that I have to do that y'all don't have to do. And you know what I have to do? I have to preach. That means I have to sit with these texts, and then about Friday evening in a panic, I have to think about my week, right? And then I go, oh, that's where you were. That, that, that's really, I am, I am the, the guy where Jesus appears and then Jesus disappears, and where Jesus appears and then Jesus disappears. And it's not Jesus. It's kind of me, right? Is it strange to hear, and I don't think this will be strange for Pastor Pless to hear, but that sometimes pastors get so involved in the work that they forget about Jesus? Is that strange to hear? We, we do. We're all about, I got to get here and I got to get here and I got to write this and I got to do this. We, we forget that, oh, by the way, let them see Christ as our jobs, right? We sometimes forget that. And I think it's because we get tired and we get busy and we get heartbroken and we get disappointed and we get afraid just like you do. And God just feels distant. Just feels distant. That's where, these, that's where they are on this road. They're walking on this road. There's all of these rumors swir swirling around. And Mary Magdalene, and you know how she can be, right, has talked about seeing Jesus. And we just don't know what to think, and we don't know what to do. So you know what we're going to do? We're just going to get away. And this stranger meets him on the road. And in a common act of breaking bread, for a brief second, what do they realize? Jesus is here with me right here and right now. Um, I say this over and over again. Why, why do we choose to come back to this place? I, you know, is it out of obligation? Maybe. Is it out of tradition? Maybe. But also, isn't this a place where we just stop? And what do we do? What do we literally do? And he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. That's something we do every Sunday. Over and over and over and over again. A common thing. And just maybe for a maybe, we get a glimpse, just a glimpse of our Lord's presence. There is a moment, there is a moment that happens. Not with everybody, but with a lot of people, most of us. And I'm sure it will happen to me when I have to face that time of trial. Where you just break. You just break. 
whatever the incident is, a loss or you're afraid or something and you just break. And pastors sit with us and it just, it, I know it's coming and I can feel it coming. And you know what, the, what they always say? Pastor, why? Why is this happening? And then you know what the next thing they say? God feels so distant. And as the pastor, I sit there and my brain is going, what do I say? What do I say? What do I say? What do I say to them? What do I say to rationalize this and make, have this all make sense? You know the, what the worst thing to say to somebody in a time like that? Well, everything happens to God's plan. Right? Well, if, if that's your, if, if that's the, your loss... You know, don't, don't ever say to, to children, don't ever say God needs another angel. Because you know what the children are going to say? Doesn't he have enough? The, there's, there's no grand explanation. Right? And I just shudder because all of my theological background and all of my study of Scripture, and I just want to have the magic answer to make them not feel afraid and to make them not feel scared or make them not feel sad and there just isn't any. There just isn't any. You just sit with them. Right? And then afterwards, you know what they say to you? I'm so glad you were here. And then you realize, when do they see Christ? Not in your words, and not in your fancy theological education but just in your very presence. They see Christ in you. That's why you wear the funny collar, right? That's, the funny collar is not a sign of my status, or it is I wear church into a hospital, or I wear church into a funeral home, or I wear church into a home. And just, they call it pastoral presence. It's just sitting there and listening to them to go, I don't feel it, I don't feel it, I don't feel it. And there you sit, and you listen. Because what do you know? What do you know? You can't feel it. You can't understand it. It may not make any sense at the time, but Christ is with us, Emmanuel. God is here. God is in the midst of the brokenness. God is in the midst of the confusion and the doubt and the fear. We are not alone. We are not alone. And sometimes it takes something common to help us see it, like breaking bread or holding a hand or bringing a casserole, right? Why do we do these things? Do the people really need your casserole? Well, sure, it's nice, but what do they really need? They need to know you're with them. And they're not alone. That's the power of the resurrection. Christ is not dead. Christ is living. Christ is alive. Christ is in the world. We no longer have to worry about. We no have to worry about survival or living or dying. Christ is the alpha. Christ is the omega. Christ is the beginning. Christ is the end. The problem is sometimes we just don't see it. We just don't see it. Like these disciples. I never get angry at these disciples as though I, I, never, I never get angry at Thomas. Because I get these guys. I get it. I get it. Because sometimes I will stand here and preach a sermon, a sermon that I've worked on, a sermon that I've practiced, Every part of the sermon I've used before. And then I will say something, and guess what? You can watch it happen in my face. I'll get teary. Right? Because I hear it. Oh, the <laughs> you know, I've practiced this ten times. But oh, this is true. This is real. That's the... It's what I love about these stories. These heartbroken men 
walking away from it all, who were met in the midst of their brokenness by Jesus. And then Jesus is revealed. And then what does Jesus do? Vanishes again. Right? This feels like, this feels real to me. Right? So I give thanks, I give thanks, I give thanks that they, they asked the question, did not our hearts burn within us as he opened to us the scriptures? Amen. God has made us God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith. I
proclaim this good news to a world that so desperately needs to know it. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Two of your disciples were on the road to Emmaus. They were overcome with sadness, loss, and disappointment because of the crucifixion. But you walked with them and then opened their eyes in the breaking of the bread. We thank you, Jesus, for loving us and walking with us through our sadness, loss, and disappointment. We are children of the resurrection, and for that we say, thanks be to God. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Dear God, within our midst and within our very grasp are the sick, the grieving, the homeless, and people who have lost hope. We don't know why all of these painful things plague our world, and we don't know fully how to help. But we do know that the Bible says, Ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. God, today we ask, ask you to help us reach out in Christian love to those who need to feel your presence. God, today we seek you out. Seek you out that you hear us calling, calling you to bring peace to this broken world that without you we cannot begin to mend. God, today we knock. We knock on heaven's door, trusting that you will open that door to hear us say, Lord, help us to help your people, and in so doing, help ourselves to live a life of service here in your world. Then, Lord, give us faith, a childlike, innocent, all-trusting faith that through you all things are possible. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We lift before you today, Lord, our people in need of your healing touch. We pray for Ralph, Luetta, Paulette, Laura, Ronnie, Norma, Dan, Kevin, and Willie Ruth. May they feel the peace of Christ. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints. We especially remember Pastor Matt's friend, Don Kelly. As you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us show and share our Lord's peace.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our duty and delight that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life, and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the resurrection, the, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets. And in these ends of all ages, the gift of your Son, who preached the good news in word and deed, and who was obedient to your will even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Christ, our Lord offered for us. And believing in the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Amen, come Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all the saints in light. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Amen, come Holy Spirit. Gather our prayers with those of the apostles, the prophets, the martyrs, and all the faithful who have gone before us, and unite them with the unceasing prayer of the one who lives in us and in whom we live, Jesus Christ. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba, 
as we pray. and know Christ broken and poured out for you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
body of Christ given for you. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the gift of his body and blood strengthen, and keep and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. <laughs> 